So let's talk about the School of Fire. What are the origins of the spells, both from real life and from inside the game? Let's go in depth with the Fire School. Fire first and foremost is a powerful elemental magic in most mediums and super important to human life. Fire is typically more destructive over time than in one burst and spreads quickly. These are inspirations for things like burns converting to dots and fire having quite a few AoE spells. In Wiz, fire magic started with the dragons who ruled over the lands. We will talk more specifically about dragons and fire later when we get to those spells. Bernie's name is, of course, related to burn. He, like all the trees, is there to help the wizard and has a sense of humor. It is also interesting to note that his leaf looks like an autumn leaf. This is probably due to leaves in the fall having an orange or red color. Professor Faumea is next. This fire school professor is a fire elf from Avalon. What is interesting here is that she doesn't look like all the other fire elves in the game. She also has hair and a name that resembles a flame. Now on to Professor Ignis Ferric of the Arcanum. He is a fire door from Imperia and is named after Ignis, which is a light that appears in the night over marshy ground and is often a combustion of gas. Ignis is also the Latin name meaning fiery. His name could be from igneous rock, which is rock formed from the solidification of magma or lava. Dwarves are thought to be miners in most fairy tales like Snow White and also in Lord of the Rings, specifically The Hobbit. But in Norse mythology, they were mainly known as expert smiths and masters of forging in the fire of their homeworld Nadavalir. This is indeed the place that we see Thor forge his hammer in Infinity War. Now that we have the professors in the tree out of the way, we're going to look at the spells, the big meat of this video. I decided to group them by type and similar inspiration and not in the order that you actually get them. First we'll be looking at spells that are based on mythology. And there are a few because, let's be honest, mythology is a really good place to get some ideas from. The first spell is an easy one, Hephaestus. This one is pretty easy as I'm obsessed with Greek mythology and super sad we didn't see more of it in Wiz. Hephaestus is also pretty obviously a fire spell. This is because he's the god of forging and therefore is always associated with fire. He is known to have been super ugly, which Wiz didn't really get right except maybe his slouching and bad posture, but makes up for his lack of looks with great skill with the anvil. He can craft grand weapons and creations that have messed with his fellow gods on many occasions. Unlike most gods of Aquila, it's hard to say exactly what type of bird Hephaestus is. My guess is that he's a golden eagle. The problem with that is that the golden eagle is the bird most commonly associated with Zeus. Either way, Hephaestus, clearly a fire spell. Next is Hecound. Hecound isn't necessarily a far stretch from being a fire spell. A hound, of course, is a type of dog used for hunting due to their really good sense of smell, and the heck part of Hecound mostly relates to the spell coming from the depths of hell. The hellhound is a supernatural dog in folklore, usually having mangled fur, glowing red eyes, super strength and speed, ghostly or phantom characteristics, and a foul odor. Dogs of the underworld date back to both Greek and Nordic mythology. Greek had its three-headed dog Cerberus, Norse had its massive guard dog Garmer. This version of the two is more generalized and is seen more with the Christian belief of a fiery hell. Besides that, I'm not sure where the little doghouse fits into the lore other than it's a dog and it's funny to see this giant beast burst out of such a tiny house. Let's do Ifrit next. The Ifrit is an Islamic creature which is a demon with a fiery appearance, noted for their strength and cunning. Most often it seems to be spelled with an I, but this isn't always the case. These fire demons are a type of jinn, but jinn is a very vague term for any kind of spirit, demon, or supernatural creature in Arabian or Islamic mythology. In the case of this spell, we see a very typical genie from our western depiction. It rises out of a lamp and carries a large sword. The spell hits and then applies a debuff. Only two actions. It would have been nice to see a genie type spell have three actions, almost like it's playing homage to like three wishes. However, this type of jinn and Ifrit is fire in nature and therefore easy to see why it is a fire spell. 
Sun Serpent is a very interesting spell. This spell is based on the Mesoamerican Quetzal, or Flying Feathered and Winged Bird Snake. These creatures are almost always related to the main deity, Quetzalcoatl, who was very important to the people of the area and was the god of the wind, primarily. However, he was instrumental in the creation of the Aztec universe. In one myth, Quetzalcoatl and one of his brothers, depending on the myth, were responsible for the creation of the cosmos. Now here's where this wind god gets its fire and sun serpent attributes. It is said that he and his brother created fire and then after used that fire to mold a partial sun, which helped give life to the first man and woman. It is also worth mentioning that he is the god of maize, or corn, as in like the most important crop in that area. So yeah, a Mesoamerican god of wind and corn who somehow becomes a fire spell. But it kind of actually works, so good job, King's Isle. The elephant is a car, but it's also a hell elephant. Hell is, of course, most commonly depicted as a fiery and desolate place, perfect for a fire demon spell to be summoned from. There are also Hindu demon elephants like Gajasura, who was slayed by the god Shiva and might have drawn inspiration for this demon elephant from hell. Besides that, it's just a fiery elephant. Alright, so this like mythology category is the biggest, and we have three left. The first being Krampus. Oh, Krampus, where to start with you? Uh, well, in Central European folklore, Krampus is a horned figure described as half goat, half demon. It is known to come around during Christmas season and punish children who have misbehaved, basically like the opposite of Santa Claus. In many versions, Krampus has a bag which he puts naughty children in, and then takes them away. He doesn't necessarily have a relation to coal and then therefore fire, but Santa, when not associated with Krampus, is known to give naughty kids coal, and therefore Krampus does this well when it comes to whiz. And of course, coal is fire, so I guess because Krampus has its connection to Christmas, this spell is only available during Christmas events. And yeah, that's how you get a Christmas fire spell. Now for the crown jewel of this category, Reign of Fire. Reign of Fire is a volcano. Enough said. Of course it's a fire spell, but wait, how how does that fit into the mythology section? Actually, it is very interesting. At the beginning of the spell, we see dancing water moles, who are most similar to a Hawaiian and in general Polynesian culture. They have the tiki masks, the huts, the grass skirts. They seem to dance around a fire and almost praise and summon the volcano. The Polynesian islands are known for literally being volcanoes themselves. The Hawaiian goddess of fire and volcanoes, Pele, is not only known for fiery destruction, but was also the god that created the islands in the first place. To the Hawaiians, this fiery mountain of doom is also what brought them life in the creation of their home. It's funny how what seems like the most simple spell in terms of fire is actually like one of the most creative and well thought out. But then again, maybe I'm giving King's Isle a bit too much credit. So Reign of Fire was awesome. And now we have to talk about the worst spell based on mythology. Scorching Scimitars is the Mirage spell. In this spell quest, it is said that it is a combination of Jin, dancing sandals, and a bit of steel. A scimitar is a type of sword that is wielded, so the steel, and the dancing sandals is the hint to the other part of the spell. We've already talked about Jin's with Ifri, and I'll be honest, this spell being another worse version of Ifri is a bit disappointing. I know Ifrit was the spell you got during Celestia, and then Mirage came around, they want to give it the Jin spell it deserved, but we already kinda had one, and also, the Jin spell was also fire. Ifrits are Jin that are specifically fire, but as I said before, Jin's are pretty vague and could have been almost anything, most likely even myth. I'm not sure why this spell is fire, it, they just took a Jin and gave her devil horns and placed her in some lava, but nothing about a scimitar spell makes it fire. Basically, Ifri did it better in every way. With the fire mythology spells being done, let's talk about some spells based on history and tradition. We start with Raging Bull. Raging Bull is a Scorsese film starring Robert De Niro made in 1980. It's about a boxer's fall from glory. Does that have anything to do with the fire spell? Probably not, but it might have been a small inspiration for the name nonetheless. 
If I had to guess, this spell is based on the crazy event of the running of the bulls that happens in Spain and is held to this day, with almost 50 to 100 people injured every year during the run. Yes, running with bulls is as crazy as it sounds, and is a great reference to history and tradition. Now what makes this spell fire? Not much, but my guess is that bulls historically are seen getting angry at the matador in its red cape, although technically bulls are colorblind to red and probably dislike the movement more than the color, but whatever. Anyway, bulls, red cape, mad. Fire is red. And yeah, yeah that's honestly all I got, because nothing from the spell quest gives me a hint either. If you can tell me why the raging running of the bulls inspired spell is fire, besides it just looking cool, I'd love to know. Since that one wasn't like super totally clear, let's go to one that is, and that is fire dragon. Everybody knows dragons. In medieval and western mythologies, they are depicted as flying snakes who can breathe fire, hence a fire spell. Interestingly enough, most eastern mythologies, like China, have dragons as guardians of the sky and the river, and they're friendly, spiritual, and cultural. They also lack the wings and the fire burning ability which we see from our typical depiction of dragons. Regardless, it's a dragon, and it being a fire spell is pretty clear and epic. It even looks to like land on top of a volcano. Brimstone Revenant is next. Brimstone is sulfur, or also a bright yellow butterfly or moth. Brimstone is also a movie from 2016 with Guy Pearce and Dakota Fanning, but however, I don't think that movie has any relation. In the Bible, fire and brimstone is an expression of God's wrath and judgment. This is probably where the brimstone gets its fire typing. As for the Revenant part, this is also a movie, this time with Leo, of course, but also means a person who has returned especially supposedly from the dead. In this case, a brimstone revenant is a kind of fiery being back from the dead, maybe seeking revenge. It's loose, but the connections are still there and that's good enough. Meteor Strike. A meteor is a rock from space, usually thought to have like a trail of fire. 66 million years ago, a giant asteroid hit the earth and probably generated a huge tsunami. And this is what wiped out and killed the dinosaurs and left the huge Chicxulub crater in Mexico. This massive and wide range power probably is what makes this spell an AOE. Nautilus Unleashed is the newest fire spell and sees a cannon on a boat. At first I thought this cannon might be the essence cannon, but it isn't called the same thing and bears no relation. The ship is something we haven't really seen before in game, but it doesn't mean that we don't have hints about it. First thing to note is that it comes from the Celestian Spellemental Pact, so it is definitely based on Celestia. Besides that, we can take a few things. In the classic science fiction book 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Captain Nemo's underwater ship is called the Nautilus and is regarded as ahead of its time. This is because of its advanced depiction of modern submarines, which weren't really invented in the way we think of them in the 1870s. The other connection I could find is that of the animal, the Nautilus. This thing is considered a living fossil and has tentacles similar to an octopus. It is named for the Greek word sailor. How either of these specifically makes it fire, I'm not sure. At one point in the spell's animation though, it blows up a meteor on its way down to hit the enemy. And one commenter in a YouTube video said, easily could have prevented Shivalba, which doesn't have much to do with the spell, but I just thought it was funny. Burning Rampage is the second to last spell that we'll talk about based on history. Let's take two spells and put them together. Sunbird meets Firezilla. But what does this spell actually mean? Firezilla is most likely our favorite kaiju. Godzilla has this kind of atomic heat breath, which is kind of like a laser. Heat breath would make this spell fire, but he also is said to use an electromagnetic force to concentrate this heat into a laser-like beam, which is probably why the original spell might be Storm, but we can get into that deeper in the Storm video. Okay, so we have Fire Godzilla. Then you have the Sunbird. My guess is that the Sunbird in this spell represents Radon, perhaps? Radon is a flying enemy of Godzilla in a prehistoric colossal bird in the form of a Pteranodon. Either that or it represents the lesser known giant condor, which would fill the same role. Either way, it looks like the spell takes Godzilla's fire breath into account and pits him against the whiz version of one of his flying enemies, either Radon or the giant condor. Basically, it's a giant kaiju Godzilla fight, and that's awesome. Okay, so our last history inspired spell is quite an interesting one. It's time for fire from above. Well, the spell is pretty straightforward, but also kind of confusing. 
I mean, most stuff in Wiz is based on cultures and mythology, but in this case, the spell is based on bombers. King's Law, I know you put Cthulhu in the game. Death video, just wait. But man, for a fun kid's card game, this is dark. The first use of a bomber was in 1912 by an Italian pilot on a Turkish railway station. This spell is based on the Chrysalis quest where you bomb open an entrance. Our best info from the spell can come from this quest. Here we see an NPC talking about the powder and the fire that make up the bomb. Also the dialogue is a reference to the film Apocalypse Now. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Which might also help us in determining its origin. I looked into what is in these bombs, and Kaiser is used in a lab process as a filter, filler, or insulator, and is heat resistant. Kermi, however, is a red dye from the dried bodies of the females of a scale insect, and were used as red dye by the ancient Greeks and Romans. It seems that this bomb is most likely some kind of fiery insect-based napalm, you know, because chrysalis, and that it will bomb and leave the area in flames. So yeah, this spell is a napalm bombing, it seems like. I have to say that a reference to the brutal Vietnam War is a tad dark for Wiz, but a really cool design nonetheless. Also, it seems like King's Hour really got much better as designing spells as they went on. The last few spells are so much more in depth than just like a flaming cat, which has no inspiration or meaning. And speaking of flaming cat, we reach our last category. These are spells that are mostly based on fire animals. And yeah, fire cat is first. I looked for a while and I just could not find anything specific. It seems like a lot of these one pip spells are just taking an animal and giving it an element. Speaking of animals with fire, let's talk about sunbird. Is it based on an Asian seasoning? Uh, no, or at least probably not. There are 145 species of sunbird but this spell is not likely inspired by any of these birds. Well, I don't know what the X in the casting animation, this spell is probably most likely just a baby phoenix. But then, why have a baby phoenix when two pips later you get a real phoenix? So this spell could have fit in other categories, and a few other spells cross categories as well, but the phoenix is a flaming bird of myth. This bird has the ability to die and be reborn from his own ashes. Not much else to say, but maybe that should have made this a healing spell? Nah, who am I to say? Unfortunately, our last spell isn't something super special either, but does have interesting origins. Fire Elf relates to the elves that appear in many mythologies, mostly Germanic speaking, like English. Elves are human-like but supernatural in their beauty and magical power. They appear in this form commonly in Norse mythology in books like Lord of the Rings. This type of elf is probably more related to Professor Falmea, there are also elves that appear shorter and more wily in things such as like Harry Potter and also the ones that we think of that help Santa Claus during Christmas. Elves are also often depicted in nature and with bows, which was also got right. So it seems like this fire elf spell took more of the shorter wily elves but put them in more of the bow with nature like we mostly think of the tall and supernatural elves. I mean, regardless, the elven inspiration is cool, but nothing really says it should be fire, and they probably would have been better off being like an ice or even a life spell. Anyway, that is all of the fire spells in their lore. I'm going to do a quick off the top of my head ranking of them in order of favorites, taking both their inspiration and if they should truly be fire into account. Uh, it goes left to right and top to bottom. So the top left is the best spell, I think, in terms of its lore and inspiration and the bottom right is the most boring. Anyway, let me know if you guys agree. I mean, certain spells on this list like Link or Detonate or Immolate are just not super interesting to look at and don't have much to do with animations, so I just didn't add them. I was also bound to miss a few things, so let me know if there are any extra facts or inspiration about the Fire School and their spells. I'm planning on doing videos like this for every school, but if you guys really like them, I can do a series where I talk about the worlds too and how they and their characters are inspired. Anyway, I had so much fun researching and making this video, but it did take like a really long time. So please leave a like and a comment of what you think. Also, I'm really trying to hit a thousand subscribers, so if you guys aren't already subscribed, it would mean a lot to me. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. See you later.